seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy, Happy New Year! Year! Three hours ago. Well, it's oh, New Year's. It's 2016. If you were on the East Coast like Swain, you're a big idiot. You went too fast. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Aww. Cruise Radio. You guys are my first kiss of 2016. Aww. Hopefully not your last kiss of 2016. You never know. Years, guys. <laughs> Fine, it's 2016. Whatever. Whatever. Swain, happy 2016. Great year so far. <laughs> so far. Yeah, we're off to a good start so far. <laughs> if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to continue writing 2015 for the next several months. Uh, if it's okay with you guys, I'm going to keep saying the joke, haven't seen you since last year. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, that's not okay with me. Yeah. Well, Swain? That's the most disappointed I've heard Swain in this year so far. <laughs> Hey, other mayo. Oh boy. Memes, memes, memes. It's 2016, and this is Crucible Radio, the show for all things Destiny PvP. Swain, how you doing? Uh, doing all right. Loving this new year. You know how things go. Sure. Years, all that. Bones, you? I'm just swell. Birds, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm trying to... Uh, Trying to keep a nice even keel this 2016, you know? Don't want to get too flashy January 1st, you know what I mean? Yeah, gotta Keep it cool. Got to ease into it. Keep it cool. I'm going to try to keep it real chill and hella dope. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like, sounds like a New Year's resolution to me. Oh, Speaking of New Year's resolutions, we should uh, come up with some New Year's resolutions for the Crucible, for the three of us. Maybe for the show as a whole. That's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. I know. I think one of my big goals this year is to permanently raise my KD. And it's not because KD matters. It's just because if I'm dying for every kill, I know it's going to put me on tilt and I'm not playing as smart as I can where I'm really, you know, picking my battles. I'm running away when I need to, using all those slides and blinks and, and really loving the cover. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep real in tune with that, you know, just uh, just as an indicator, make sure that I'm, I'm playing in a way that, that feels good to me. That sounds pretty good. Not that KD actually matters, but... <laughs> Well, how about, like, KD per match? Yeah. That's what KD is, right? Well, like, it seems like people would think about it as, like, oh, I'm going to go on Destiny Tracker and look at my number. Yeah, yeah, lifetime KD is just kind of a a whole different thing, especially if you're just kind of getting into Crucible later on in the lifespan of Destiny, like all three of us did, really. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way to... you Don't make your goal to compete with the people who have been taking it seriously since day one which is cool i'm glad you're taking it seriously but like not you birds but people in general the collective you uh (laughs) the royal we i have that same kind of thing and i've been thinking about my resolutions it's like i've been playing at a top one percent performance level but my numbers will just never reflect that because i was just a bobo for the first five months of destiny bobo life so yeah while i want to keep getting better and i want to dominate in trials all the time and and play at the top of my game i also want to try to relax and have fun a little bit more which seems very general Mm. but i've been pushing myself really hard to perform for the past three or four months since the taken king came out and i'm seeing results but like just being so hard on myself and so intense all the time so i just want to like enjoy and i think that's kind of showing in my loadout so we'll talk about that later swain what are your resolutions i want to say my resolution i have two Uh, First one would probably be that I want to up my DTRs. Mm. That just means that I play more in different aspects of the game. I'm playing better in those aspects. It's a little bit more telling than just your KD. And I always feel really excited when one of my DTRs goes up. So I feel like I would just want to focus on that a little bit more. The second one would probably be don't get attached to my weapons for various reasons. First one being, I want to be a more diverse player, and I want to be able to play with different loadouts and different armor sets and all that. The second part of that being, I don't know what Bunchy's going to do. 
they can do what they did with you know year two and just be like well these ones don't matter anymore and then i just cry in a corner when Twi- <laughs> twilight garrison goes away for a half a year so being able to play with different loadouts being able to play with different weapons uh, i feel like i need to focus on that a little bit more speaking of twilight garrison have not got mine yet hmm driving me insane i've gotten a few shut up no sharing <laughs> What about this as a as a resolution for the show? We'll say we're gonna have a bunch of awesome guests in 2016, including some bungee folks that aren't John Wisniewski. <laughs> He's <laughs> so, welcome back. Oh, absolutely, but not for a while. No shots, news. <laughs> How about we try and stay positive? Try and stay positive. Not about not about putting a happy face on, but leading a positive life and having that reflected in the crucible and the show and the fact that we're doing this because it's about having fun, you know? Yep. I'm actually really proud of us. I can, let's talk about that. Let's talk about <laughs> 2015. Let's pat ourselves on the back a little bit more. We deserve it a little bit, I think. I mean, we started in, what, June? That was our first uh, test run episode. Oh, boy. And started out real small, and we've grown quite a bit. We still have lots of room to grow, but I think throughout all of that – we really stuck to our mantra and focused on getting better at the crucible and not letting things weigh us down, like changes to our favorite guns or lag or whatever tilt. We've accomplished a lot personally as players and, and as the show. And I, I, I congratulate the two of you and it's been an awesome year and I'm looking forward to another amazing one with you guys. Well, thanks bones. Yeah, 2015, not bad. If we've really got nine more years of destiny <laughs> coming up, I I don't think I could pick another game I'd rather have that be for. For sure. Word. Well, not everything is positive in 2016, though, because there are some things that are a fact of life. Iron Banners come around, and... Uh, oh, boy. Lucky us. We get to experience the ups and the downs that are Iron Banner, and probably a constant feature of Iron Banner is... <laughs> lag and it sucks it's not universal it's not every match sometimes it's just the one guy sometimes it seems like half the team or you're playing late at night and you get match made into a lobby you just know is no good but uh lag sucks it is something that's in the game and it's something that we don't have control over so how do we uh combat it well there's not much you can do what you could unplug your ps4 and just go back to bed (laughs) (laughs) never a bad plan i like that scenario it implies that you woke up playing destiny (laughs) should be sleeping yep i I had the cover pulled up to my chin every time i'm playing trials to feel safe well i I look there is some stuff you can do but the reality is is that lag is a fact of life playing a game on the internet destiny in particular and sometimes the most you can do is just sort of acknowledge that it's there. And if you know that that guy is, is really going to gonna piss you off over the course of the match, that doesn't mean you have to get angry. It doesn't mean you have to throw your controller. If you see it coming, then you can take a deep breath and prepare for it. That's some sport psychologist Steve head shrinking right there. But uh, probably the stance I'd take to it. But, I mean, there's got to be something else, right? I think one of the more helpful things that I've been trying to do with teams especially when you're in a full fire team of six in iron banner is to call out who that person is that's lagging on the other team it could be one or two but just say hey that titan with this gamer tag or whatever they're lagging and i guess make fun of them if you want or complain or whatever but salt doesn't help you guys then continue to play that game and you've got i don't know probably five to ten minutes left of some control to play so why not just try to have fun with it just point it out and say that one's lagging and then if people see them or they're entering a 1v1 and they recognize that they might back off sooner as opposed to charging up and trying to melee a person who's going to disappear and that player might still go on to have too high a score or throw off the game for everyone but at least you can focus and just say like look I've got five other people I can shoot at. Use your cover and use your escape routes to the best of your ability. Uh, when you recognize that that person's coming at you, maybe just put some damage on them, see what the reaction is, and then just back off to your cover yeah. or just run away. Running away and finding a different opponent is probably your best bet. Yeah. No, I definitely have been in this situation where it's like, 
all right, I've got my fusion out. I land like six bolts on the lagger, and he doesn't die. And I go, this is unbelievable. <laughs> and then I shoot him again. And then I shoot him again, and I throw a grenade at him. And then he kills me because he's got superpowers. But then he dies from the very first set of bolts like he should have. It just took a while. And so when you're in that situation where you know you've got him dead to rights, you know that you've gotten the headshot on him, you, you've done the damage that you need to do, then... Give it a sec. Go ahead, get away from him, get some distance between them. It's not fair. But if th- you know that they're going to die and it's just a matter of time before it registers, don't give them a kill while you're in the process. Just take some time and don't let your kill turn into a postmortem because you couldn't walk away from it and say, all right, I, I know it's coming. You just you just wait. <laughs> You'll get you yours. Just wait. <laughs> You'll get yours. I think it happened a few times sniping this week where I would – land a headshot, and it wouldn't register right away, but then i get the kill. And the first couple times you go to take the second one or you switch to primary and you're still looking and maybe another teammate of theirs shoots you, and then I just had to do the shot, know that it hit my target, and walk away. And if you get that delayed kill, then fine. You are now safe. You're not standing out there trying to fire three rounds of 1,000-yard stare. If it doesn't, that's fine, too, because you shouldn't be taking so many sniper shots from one spot. You should probably relocate because sixes is chaos. So you just got to mm-hmm. say, like, all right, cool. That was my attempt to shoot from this angle, time to reposition, and get my whereabouts back after scoping down and having my radar blocked. You just got to keep moving. Sound mm-hmm. advice. Well, guys, I've, I've discovered something this week. You what? Really? I've discovered an alternate Sunbreaker loadout. And I, wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me that, that the extra hammers, the tracking, and cauterize is not the only Sunbreaker build worth using? Apparently not. Really? Yeah. And I've, I've I've discovered this in other subclasses before, and so have a lot of people. But I think this one for Sunbreakers is something that I'm not seeing at all and might be a little bit perfect. <laughs> Just a little bit perfect. (laughs) Like 10% perfect. It's almost perfect if it wasn't for the lag. Mm. (laughs) No, more so the melee detection. But I've been running Sun Charge. And if you don't know what that means, it is basically your shoulder charge from your striker class. And multiply it by three as far as distance goes. And whatever you hit goes off into the distance and explodes into whatever else is around and then you can still throw hammers. So, yeah. It is pretty nuts that you can still throw hammers while using that option. It's kind of like a golden gun combined with Blade Dancer. So the cool thing about this is that it kind of has a bit of tracking. Uh, I would relate it to how Blade Dancer, you kind of just have to waltz towards them and hit the, the melee and you're going to hit something. I find it very similar to that. And you can just kind of go in one direction. It'll move itself to hit the person. And then if you're in a, a cap point or something and you get that first person and they just explode into each other, it's even better. <laughs> it's the coolest looking animation in Destiny right now, I think. Oh, for The sure. actual charge. It feels so good to use. It makes this amazing whoosh sound. Um, but with this loadout, you got to be a little bit careful. If you are going to throw a hammer, uh, it takes a big chunk away from your super. This is like you subbing out the more hammers for your ability to sun charge into people. So be careful. You get, I think it's like six if you don't throw hammers. You can get six in a row. And that's a lot. It's a decent amount of sun charges. Uh, But you also have to be aware of where your opponents are. So walk into your situation knowing, you know, they're lined up and they're going to be behind this cover. And you got to plan it like you would any other super. But you can just waltz into that room and just be like, and all of a sudden you got three kills. <laughs> so why would you choose to use Sun Charge over just throwing a close range hammer? I'm finding that the hammers are a little bit unruly now uh, since they changed them up. I'll throw hammers when I feel like I need to close the distance a little bit quicker. Uh, the Sun Charge only has a certain amount of uh, distance it can cover. And then if you do it and miss, you've used a decent part of your super. But with like the changes, they're a little bit harder to master. And if I, even if I had more hammers, I've had situations where I've thrown three at a guy and it still hasn't killed him. So I feel like I'm 
since I played a lot of striker recently, I'm very familiar with the shoulder charge and I'm very familiar with the movement. So this is just an extension of my striker, but on the solar class with the solar abilities like cauterize, I like that build. I like the fusion sun charge with cauterize and not the tracking. I like to use the, uh, the fleet fire, which ups your agility and your reload speed when you get flame kills. And it's been working out amazing, especially in sixes. Uh, I'm going to try in trials this weekend a little bit and see how that works too. Another aspect of the Titan Sunbreaker build that I definitely didn't use prior to 2.1 was the melee that leaves a sunspot. And then you also get, you know, I think you need to use it in tandem with the other perk that lets you stand in sunspots and get an overshield. Yeah. And that thing is awesome. It works sort of like flame shield, but not as aggressively and... I was noticing I could get a melee in those melee duels where you're the last one to stand, but you're very weak. When you're just standing in a sunspot, now that you won, it makes it really hard for other people to just get cleanup kills on you when you're weak, which is awesome for sixes too, because which is it's chaos. You know, you never know where you're getting shot from sometimes. And I was using that to great effect, and I would even stay there and then take shots at another player while I had this nice overshield, and then my health is coming back anyways, hopefully. But there's a lot of options now to the Sunbreaker that uh, definitely did not exist before they had to tweak those. Try out Simmering Flames in Mayhem. (laughs) It's just, it's (laughs) it's nonsense. It's nonsense how quickly you get your your grenades when you're supercharged. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's kind of like how I discovered this alternate path. I kind of like, I spent a lot of time with Striker, but I wanted something new and I wanted to try something different. And this led me to this. And I'm pretty happy I tried it. Well, so that attitude's really interesting because I, you know, I've said on the show before, like I'm the kind of guy who eats the exact same thing for lunch every day. (laughs) I definitely have a habit of like figuring out my build and my loadout and my subclass and my setup. And they're just playing that same one over and over and over again. And, And really locking into one is good, I think, because you really sort of master the ins and outs of it. But there's so many different things that you can change up. And the more I play, the more I'm realizing the value of going like, all right, well, am I comfortable with this setup right now? Like, how many matches in a row have I played with Nerwins and a shotgun? Let's change it up a little bit. And there's some stuff that seems obvious, but until you really get around to trying it for yourself, um, you're just not experiencing the whole game, just just what what's out there. And you may end up finding something that you like more than what you previously were locked into. Yeah, I was, I've been thinking about that since we talked to Sage about it and how there should be options and builds and things like that and how there definitely wasn't in year one specifically and then with the release of Sunbreakers and stuff. But I've been thinking about how I can change it up a little bit. And I've been playing Sunsinger a lot. I love Sunsinger in Trials. I don't really do Fireborn. I love doing Radiant Skin to use supers aggressively. It saves me a lot in those 1v3 scenarios. But I was also realizing that I've just sort of never tweaked my agility, recovery, strength, or armor ever. I, I can't remember the last time I tweaked those on my Warlock builds. And I've kind of discovered the value of recovery in the past couple weeks and i now spec for max recovery or agility and and those are always you know one's a little higher than the other but man is that just the way to go for me now i've noticed that you can stay in the game and get back in there so much quicker for a long time especially in year one the conventional wisdom was we'll just run max armor because then you can survive a trip mine you can survive an extra last word bullet and like that's still the case. There's lots of things you can survive with a high armor build that you couldn't otherwise. And that's a very viable way to approach the game. But I know a lot of people have set up their builds, and I was one of them, for max armor and just never even tried it again. And it wasn't until my hunter when I actually specced for uh, max agility, which gives you, uh, I think, max recovery at the same time and almost no armor, that I realized, like, okay, well, I'm not as 100% durable as I was before, but the max agility is so, so liberating. Even without a gun like Mita that's going to boost your speed, if I try and play with anything other than max agility now, I feel so slow. (laughs) I feel like I'm plodding around the map. 
And I have to say, you know, recovery got a tweak in year two. And if you haven't done it yet, just play a couple matches with it and experience, okay, well, I, I'm not as bulletproof. I do have to disengage a little bit more frequently. But you can kind of just disengage, reload, count to three, and get back in there. And if you've got your agility up, reposition at the same time that is – it, it, it's just it's very fun and if you haven't tried it you really owe it to yourself to take whatever your current setup is and try the one that you haven't used in a long time i will say that the biggest argument against or in uh, opposition to you can't survive grenades and things like that i actually have to give credit to maniac greek we were playing in a scrimmage with uh, swain here and a couple other guys it's moisty uh, we're not calling them moisties. No, we're saying scrims. That's our New Year's resolution for 2016. <laughs> moisties! They're called yeah. scrims now. You shut up, Swain. Swain, we can delete you from this part of the podcast. <laughs> but uh, So we were in scrimmages, and we were playing with some pretty moisties. restrictive rules to just have fun, like snipers only or primaries only or hand cannons only. And he basically showed me how much recovery matters in those 1v1s because we both hit each other to about absolute. You know, and, and we're both there. We both need to back off. We didn't get the kill. I go and hide, and I'm waiting for my recovery to come back. And he's in my face and just stabs me with a melee <laughs> with most of his health back. And I was just like, okay, what? And then I realized he was running high recovery. I had basically none. And my 1v1 was just over because he was back to full health, and then I'm sitting there waiting. with one or two shots to go with a primary. I mean, I can't imagine if he had anything other, like a grenade, I would have been just gone so that would that's what made me convinced and it's still scary to run with really low armor you got to really get used to it and you feel like (laughs) man i'm running out there with just like charging into battle jousting without uh armor on or something like that it sounds terrifying but it it really pays off in the long run especially for those uh those warrior builds i also like it for the uh the bait and switch setup Mm -hmm. i'm having this 1v1 and i know like oh this guy is out for blood because most people that's just how they play and you kind of have to play <laughs> towards that. And uh, Bloodlust. the best thing I like doing is just running away and immediately turning around where I can know I'm set up, you know, my feet are playing it, and the sniper rifle is just right where I know they're going to be coming. And they're just going to come right at you. And by that time, you have full health. You've run enough that you got full health. And they don't know what's going to happen. So that's one of my favorite things to do with that high recovery build. Yeah. What about like exotic setups? Are you guys doing any alternate exotics? Trying anything out with that? I've been playing just today with uh, I finally got some sealed Aham car grasps. Thank you, sir. Ooh. On the Night Stalker with the double smoke, you, you're going to want to change your build. I think in that case, it really makes sense to have uh, Invenom to get that damage over time. So you can just sort of use them as grenade spam. It's it's just different. Your go to becomes a little bit different versus you know, running an intellect discipline build. Um, you know, maybe that's a smaller example though. Um, but it definitely makes me go into a subclass. I already know pretty well and say, okay, well, I'm not taking in graviton forfeit. I'm taking in something else. How am I going to get the best play out of this particular setup? What about you guys? Something that changes my entire way of setting up would be something like no backup plans on my Titan. I love doing that every once in a while because it's an entirely different play style than I'm used to. That warrior shotgun defender, never really played defender. But when I do, I really like to run the no backup plans and they offer you the overshield for much longer. And when you get a shotgun kill, it procs. So you're constantly running around with like a ridiculous amount of armor. It definitely helps when you're running that warrior running up in people's face and they're like, oh man, he's got too much health. I can't wear him down. It's it's amazing, and it's it's something that I encourage everyone to try that has a Titan. I just use Void Fang. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with Void Fang. Birds, we talked a little bit about young Ahamkara's spine, I think, recently. Have you been using those a lot more? Oh, see, that's... I can't believe I ever forgot one. That's a really good one. Um, you know, coming in year two and not having Acleophage Symbiote and playing a lot of Gunslinger, I kind of said, all right, well, I'm going to need an exotic. Let's go with this one. <laughs> Um, that's the one that gives you uh, a second trip mine grenade and increases the time for them. And I think maybe that one's a, a perfect example of this. I didn't really like the trip mine grenades. They were kind of annoying, and I never knew where to place them. And it seems like occasionally I would just get lucky and stick them to someone's forehead. <laughs> but really embracing that exotic and having a high discipline build with it, 
always thinking in terms of not, okay, how can I throw a grenade into the mix and tag as many people as I want, like you might with a fire bolt, but instead thinking, okay, where are they going to be coming from? Where are they going to be backing up into? Where can I surprise them from? And having that second grenade as sort of a backup plan. Um, that one definitely became the core of my build. I was easily getting 20% of my kills from trip mine grenades, um, especially when you can stick one to someone's forehead. So satisfying. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe that's the takeaway from this. Whatever you're doing right now is fine, but, uh, what, what the heck? Why not try something different? Try the one that Zer sold that you'll never use. <laughs> Whatever perks you're using right now, just switch them randomly to something else. You know, if you've been using uh, Shatter on your Voidwalker Nova Bomb since day one, eh, maybe try Lance, see if there's something there. Change it up. We're changing it up in 2016. Oh, yeah. Switching it up. <laughs> Think outside of the box what the meta is currently. Everybody's running all of these specific builds, and we can actively change the meta if we want, if the perks allow. So, like, I'm looking outside the box to try and find the next thing something that's strong something that you know everyone would love and hopefully uh we can all do that with guns with our loadouts with our exotics mm-hmm. first curse every day all day that's the meta <laughs> it could be well i mean and that sort of goes to the new year's resolution of having fun right like not every match has to be your known quantities your best gear you can have fun matches where you try out the thing that you never thought could work and uh see what happens you never know you never know you never know never know 2016 you never know guys let's come back and talk about my new favorite secondary but before that let's let's have something to come back from let's have a musical break can you feel my heart because that's my rhythm you stay Hey everybody, Birds here. Our music this week comes from the band Oceans Over Airplanes from Crown Point, Indiana. Check them out, oceansoveraireplanes.bandcamp.com. They got a lot of albums up, man. Just give us a listen. Ah, it's good stuff. All right, Birds. You phrase this as if they were your new favorite secondary, but you've been talking about fusion rifles on this show pretty much since we started, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they've been a source of controversy. You know, we've got that new dank meme. I don't know what you're talking about. About infusion rifles. It's very dank. It's the dankest I've seen, but... Uh, I heard Greg's really good with it. Oh, Greg's dead, actually. So, fusion rifles. Really? You're using them a lot? Really? I have been maining a fusion rifle for about a month now, and I've played with them off and on. The struggle with fusion rifles up front was really just believing they could be effective when everyone else is either a sniping god or, you know, a blink shotgun master. But once I kind of got in the swing of a fusion rifle, and it takes, Bones, you said it, it takes 10 games to even sort of get your head wrapped around the basics of when to use a fusion rifle, sort of how to take your shots. And after I got over that hump, I just started getting very, very effective with fusion rifles, way more so than I ever was as a sniper. And there were times when I was I was doing all right as a sniper. You know, I could, I could get some of those drag shots. Same thing with the shotgun, too. I'd put in the work. But fusion rifles really just clicked. But let me start off by saying this. Forget everything you know about fusion rifles. Forget how they were in vanilla when you could one-hit kill from across the map. Forget about your plug one that you can't take into trials anymore. Try and come into it fresh the way the stability, the recoil patterns, ADS versus hip fire, all of that has changed in year two. And if you come in with expectations of how a fusion rifle ought to work, you'll probably be disappointed. So let's, let's try a blank slate and see what we think. I agree to those terms. Well, then I think the very first thing we have to talk about is what fusion rifle to pick because they all have a slightly different feel, different recoil, different charge time, and it really benefits you to stick with one. You know, we talk about archetypes, sort of different different patterns that the guns fall into where all the guns in the same archetype are, are basically pretty similar. Um, for fusions, there's really three main archetypes. 
the first one's going to be your hard hitting, your high impact one. These are ones with 94 or higher impact. So the Gunsmith's Thesen, Dead Orbit's Hitchhiker, the Dark Blade Spite, if you happen to get lucky and get your hands on one of those. I got one of those. Uh, Might is Reckoning, uh, which is the uh, the raid one, Elevating Vision, which is the Trials one, and uh, the Vacancy, which is Future War Cult. Um, these are all your high impacts, and these are going to be the longest charge time, but the hardest hitting. So you can sort of think of of impact and charge time being on that seesaw, like rate of fire and impact are for other guns. But if your goal is to get just the most reliable one hit kills, this is the one you want. So if I'm going to use one and I'm used to the old patterns of recoil, how am I going to fare with these as far as controlling the bolts, controlling my fire? It definitely is not going to happen on accident. You definitely have to come into it prepared, right? You know, John talked about controlling the recoil as you shoot, so actively using the your your thumb to pull it down as it fires, which requires knowing when the charge time is about to be up so you can get ready to do that. That can help a lot with the recoil. Where are you aiming? I generally aim for people's knees and let the recoil carry me up. The that was how I started off once I sort of finished those first 10 games. As I've gotten more confident with them, I'll aim a little bit higher. I aim for, for stomach or for chest and really work to re- control the recoil. It also depends on, on what your, your range is. Um, but this is probably the only gun in the game where you shouldn't aim for headshots. They're not going to do you any favors. If I know somebody is sort of at the outer limits of the range, and we should talk about range for <laughs> fusion rifles too, yeah, usually aim for feet or for knees and just let the recoil do the work. I'm going to make you repeat that. It, not aiming for the head. That's the. You're right. It's the only gun where you shouldn't be aiming for the head because even shotguns, we always say you can put it in their gut, but they do crit damage, and that can be a huge difference but fusions if you're aiming too high and you don't get enough bolts on them it's just not a kill and and i've left too many people alive kind of learning that the hard way well can't these high impact revive kill they can revive kill they can uh uh sun singer uh uh they can radiance revive kill and i might say in particular it is incredibly satisfying like a snipe revive kill you can do it a distance and if you've got the timing down is like clockwork but having somebody come back to life to get melted is <laughs> hilarious. And it is also, I, I got to say, a much easier learning curve because you know where their ghost is. You can sort of position yourself in the right range and really be ready, be ready to start charging as the animation starts. When the animation finishes, your charge time is up and, and you just you just paste them against the wall. Amazing. <laughs> There's the other two archetypes, and we should talk about these. Um, there's sort of the mid uh, impact ones. These are 81 to 91 impact. So Panaray, which everyone has gotten a million drops of, uh, Susanu, which is the warlock exclusive fusion rifle you get from the gunsmith, Ash Raven's flight. I want to say is the iron banner one. Um, and of course the exotic plan C, these are sort of in that sweet spot. The charge time is a bit faster. The impact's a little bit lower. They're still pretty reliable and it's a nice middle ground. If, if the really long charge times you find are just a bit too long. Um, and then the fastest archetype, this is split shifter pro the vortex and, uh, and long far gone, which is the Vanguard one. These probably saw the biggest change in year two. They're very fast charging, faster charging than they were before. And the impact is much lower. You actually need, I want to say it's six out of seven bolts to kill, which is okay, but you have to adopt that in your play style. If you're trying to, you know, snipe somebody with your fusion rifle at a distance, then one hit kill is probably not going to happen with one of these. So what have you guys been using? You know, I've I've talked before. I'm a huge fan of the Gunsmith Thiessen. I just got the the drop this week. That's uh, a braced frame and range finder. Um, I've also really been digging Susanu. What have you guys been using? I got a Panta Ray recently that I have really fallen in love with, and that's really the gun I use to say, okay, I know how to use fusion rifles. And I did play quite a few games with it, trying to get the hang of it, not doing too well. But then I started using it in trials on frontier and definitely had a couple tickets completely with the fusion and did just fine and i really like it but i would say that that braced frame perk that gives a ton of extra stability is so key for me because it totally 
not negates that stability issue, but it really makes it smooth to where I can hit a kill and then actually aim it a second time without getting swung wildly into the air. And I really want to work on the high impact ones. I don't have a good Thesen yet, but I did get the Trials gun, and that thing is a beauty. It's got a hot swap on it. Really good roll on that one. And that one you can you know you're gonna get a good roll. But I really just like the the speed of Panta Ray. That is like you said, the sweet spot. That that's the speed for me. So you mentioned stability and and that is so key, right? Because on a fusion rifle, your stability is how much the gun recoils when it shoots, and so really how far apart your your bolts spread as as they travel. And Anything you can do to boost up stability, so braced frame, probably the best perk for it. Hand light stock, it's all right, but you're going to lose some range, which is your projectile speed, your velocity, so not ideal. But even doing things like checking out what scopes you have, or if you're using exotic, what barrel mods you have, just to try and get every little bit of extra stability that you can. Um, I find really helps to sort of increase the effective range of a gun because the bolts stay that much closer together and you can you can sort of rely on them being grouped at that much farther of a range. Um, Swain, wh- what about you? What have you been rolling with? I was waiting, just waiting for this patch to come around. I had a split shifter pro that was perfect. I've seen a ton of people wrecking shop with this. I put it away, I put it in my vault, I was like, I'm going to wait, that uh, fusion rifle buff is going to come, and I'm going to wreck house with this split shifter. And I discovered, oh my god, I suck with the split shifter. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And even though I got this great roll, I'm suffering from my inability to adapt to the different playstyles of fusion rifles now. Mm. Um, I love the fact that there is different archetypes now i like that you can play with something faster and you can also play with something more hard hitting but you're sacrificing different aspects of the fusion rifles but the split shifter is it's just not for me um so i've been kind of rolling with like plan c plan c if i'm going to use a fusion rifle i like the ability to just swap real quick and get myself out of like a really shitty situation yeah (laughs) so you know, John mentioned Plan C, right? And I think here's the deal with Plan C, because I played a lot with Plan C, and it's it's definitely on my list of go-tos. If you swap to the gun and immediately go to fire, your charge time is almost instant. And if you take advantage of that perk and you know that it's coming, that is huge, because you're getting ranged one-hit kills without the downside of having a charge time. Uh, there's a 10-second cooldown on it, but really more than anything else, you have to play with your primary out. You can't be running around with plan C out. You have to be ready to switch to it at any time. And if you master that, it's crazy. If you're not willing to commit to that, or maybe you're like me and you like running around with the fusion rifle out, then it's just not the best gun you can use. If you're not using that, then really it comes down to stats, and there are better legendaries that give you sort of a better all-around stat package than sort of plan C at its most stable. About the split shifter, I agree with you, man. They're just hard to use, because I think in order to do it, you really have to be aggressive. And if that's kind of your style, like you're jumping over a wall and the moment your feet hit the ground, you're unloading on them from almost within shotgun range, then those fast firing fusions like split shifter are, are a good choice. But if that's not your, your jam and you're kind of playing a little more defensively, which I think is kind of the fusions sweet spot, I wouldn't recommend the fast charging ones. They, they seem like they'd be easier because the charge time is lower, especially if you're new to them. But if unless you're really trying to work that play style, I think you might just be a little frustrated with them. I would say start off with one of the others first. I will say that I do like my Pantare better than Plan C, but that perk saved my ass when this Blade Dancer was coming at me the other day, and it was hilarious. Like, just being able to just panic, like, ah, as they're <laughs> flying right at you and then kill them. You're like, oh, oh, okay, I see this now. I understand this. This is good. I think actually the the flavor text on plans is wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the last thing probably to talk about with fusion rifles when it comes to learning how to play with them is 
just really understanding what fusion ra- rifle ranges are all about. And it's so key. Like like I said, forget what vanilla fusion rifles were like because those sort of long-range snipes are not going to happen anymore. Even some of the longer kind of mid-range ones, what you'd think you know, would sort of be like pushing the limits of conventional sniping, even those are, are not going to happen. Really, your sweet spot for a fusion rifle starts at right around melee range, maybe just outside of melee range. Otherwise, you're going to be susceptible to a melee or to a shotgun, which goes faster. But sort of going from that range, pushing out to about, I don't want to say, let's say 15 or 20 meters. Past that, you're just not going to be able to reliably one-hit kill. They're still very useful if you're willing to switch to the right primary. Like, I love Mida because it's got that super fast handling speed, and I can get someone all the way down to a tiny little bit of health with my fusion and then swap to Mida to clean them up like you might with a body shot sniper. And honestly, a, a fusion is it works very well in the right range. And as soon as you get outside of that range, it's going to be frustrating. And that frustration, I think it's important to interpret that as not that fusion suck. It's that you have found the effective limits of that range, but maybe that's, maybe that's right for you. Maybe it isn't a lot of it just depends on the primary, right? If you're a hand cannon kind of person, then maybe a fusion is not the best bet because those are sort of competing for the exact same ranges. So I would say be really aware of it, but When you catch someone with a shotgun out trying to close distance in a hallway and you go, oop, they started just a little bit far out. And as they're getting right in your face or that that shoulder charging striker is is right about to close in and you just unload on them at about five or six meters out. It's just the most satisfying feeling. So for me, that makes them that makes them worthwhile to use. I have a lot of fun with them. Guys, are fusion rifles actually competitive? Are we just talking about fun here? Or can I actually like win games with them, like like moist games? <laughs> <laughs> this brings up the debate I've been seeing a lot recently, and I'm not even sure which side I stand on. But can a good player use anything and win, or are certain things just better objectively? And I'm not really sure because you know there's people who are saying, well. John just said KJ Hovey uses doctrine. That's not a good enough reason to say doctrine is okay. But also, if something is intended to be used a certain way and someone is using it effectively, it implies that it can be used effectively. So I don't really know. I think fusion rifles, at least me, I need to play them a bit more. But yeah, I, th- I think so. I think the game is about positioning and it's about when to push and when to fall back and when to shoot and when to not and when to communicate and coordinate attacks and stuff like that. And it's, it's very possible that they could be. I'm also just wondering if maybe some things are fun in this game and maybe some things are competitive (laughs) and, and we may never have this world where, Oh, everything needs to be balanced. Like just, all right. If you're playing sweaty, damn it. Moist. You're playing moist. (laughs) If you're getting serious, Play with what is meant to be played seriously or with, with what mm-hmm. fits the meta at the time. Pull out your Nerwin's Mercy or Mida or Last Word. And if you are just not, I don't know, do whatever you want. That's why when you look at scrims online, you see a lot of people using Thorn. It's a year one gun, yep. but it's a very effective year one gun. And they're using it simply because, like, this is the best thing the game has to offer them at the moment as far as a competitive play, and they're all going to use it. They're going to go and use it. Someone like Texas Prod has showed me that if you put the dedication into a weapon, like Plan C, like he did, you can get the best out of whatever you want. I want to be more diverse. I want to be able to do that with any weapon I pick up. It's even tricky to use the word competitive, right? Because when we talk about real sort of top tier competitive players, these guys are good with any gun. They can use any loadout. They can snipe. They can use shotguns. For them, it's all about just the core skills of aim and movement and and thumb skill and head games and all the things that go into it. And they're going to use whatever loadout is best. And I think what it comes down to, and it kind of hurts me to say this, that for those guys, fusion rifles don't make sense. The the sniper in Destiny, you know, it's got a very tough learning curve, but if you are really at that top 1%, there's nothing more effective at every range, even very close ranges, than a sniper rifle. 
add in some of the lag issues and sort of the 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 non hit scan sort of travel time of the fusion and it can be frustrating because you can miss shots that you feel like you should have made and you know with the sniper rifle you would have made for sure and so i would say in that sense probably today fusions are not competitive but the flip side of that is that i know for myself I am far more deadly with the right fusion rifle than I am with any shotgun or any sniper on most maps. And so am I going to use fusion rifles? Yeah, I will use them in trials. I will use them in banner. I will use them in scrims. I know that for me, for my play style and sort of, you know, what my strong suits are, I am most deadly with a fusion and I'm going to go into it. So I'm not a top 1% player, but um, the best I've ever been is with the fusion rifle. So whatever that means. I guess I guess that. <laughs> and I'm going to keep using the first curse. <laughs> yeah. My favorite weapon in the game right now. The sniper rifle of hand cannons. Yeah. The fusion rifle of grenades. I'm going to be interested to possibly listen to this episode like a couple months from now. Yeah. And see where this show went, where it's going, blah, blah, blah. I can sort of feel some sort of change there's been an awakening <laughs> i knew you were gonna and go i'm there. not sure what it is i've sensed an awakening in the destiny meta do you feel it i feel it <laughs> that's not what he says he says yes <laughs> but i feel it he says Sorry, it like a pouty I've teenager i've only seen it once can you feel it it's pretty moist <laughs> damn it <laughs> spoiler alert there's something and someone can feel it so yeah. spoiler consider yourself in, spoiled here from right now we're going to talk about star wars the force awakens spoilers in star wars the force awakens the force awakens end of spoilers <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that's fair that is fair spoiler averted hey birds do you want to go see that movie yeah let's go see that movie do you want to eat like old new york deli food beforehand absolutely can you can you guys give like me plan. like four hours i i might need to just take a plane real quick all right hurry over yeah swain we'll, we'll wait for you i bought you a ticket assuming that you were going to fly out to enjoy it with and us. i'm looking around for my shoes right now <laughs> <laughs> step one to a cross-country flight find your shoes <laughs> all right guys well let's go see a movie fans of the show all of our listeners we love you so much thank you for for such a great year keep listening i hope we can we can put together some more entertaining stuff for you absolutely happy new year everyone as always guys you can find us on the space internet even in 2016 we're in the same places crucible radio on twitter follow me and bones on twitch we uh we we get moist i'm gonna unfollow you on twitter (laughs) damn it muted (laughs) have a good year guys see ya bye